This is Eric from Push Along Videos. Now, in this very special series, I'll be looking at some of the games that I played at PAX Unplugged uh, 2017. Now, recently I was at PAX Unplugged 2017 to take a look at what it's like. I've been to other PAX events, uh, and I always notice that there's a board gaming um, area there. But this time, um, this is an entire convention dedicated to mostly board games. There were some video games there as well, but mostly board games. So I had a chance to go there, take a look at what it's like, and also uh, play some games. So in this uh, very special series, I'll be talking about some of the games that I've played at PAX Unplugged and a general first impressions of the games. So this is not a full review per se, but it should give you a pretty good idea of what the games are like. Uh, as I played them and give you my impressions as well. So let's take a look at uh, the games that I've played. Now I just want to take a moment here to thank uh, my sponsors. All right, Fun Again Games. Uh, Push a luck video is an affiliate of Fun Again Games. So if you go to funagaingames.com and when you check out after you buy uh, any games there, if you put my code PULV, that's a Papa Umbrella Lima Virgo. All right, in the affiliate code section, a little bit, a little bit of kickback comes back to me as well. So thank you very much if you do that. And also, uh, I like to thank Tasty Minstrel Games uh, for sponsorship. Uh, Tasty Minstrel now has a podcast and is my is run by my very good friend uh, Lance, uh, the Undead Viking. So um, if you want to take a listen to what Tasty Minstrel has to say about the board game industry, about the games they're releasing, do check out uh, their podcast as well. This is a first impressions look at 1920 Wall Street. This is by designer Perapao Listosella, right, by publisher Looping Games. It's 2 to 5 players, takes about 45 to 60 minutes to play. It is released in 2017. Now, in the game, players are. It is a card game, it's a pure card game. Players are trying to. Uh, they, are, they are moving their meeple around the board and then purchasing either stock cards which they can keep and then can sell later or uh, market manipulation cards which will then fluctuate the market and the share prices there's only uh, four four resources uh, as in four products to look at to manage and so yeah so all you're trying to do is just moving on your turn you just decide whether you want to move uh, you need to move clockwise but you can also pay a coin to flip and then move anti-clockwise and where you land uh, you need to be able to pay it so each player will have a number of credits all right there's a credit card that you can uh, credit card you have a credit card that you can keep track of how many money you have so usually you will if you can pay from your credit card you do not need to actual pay actual coins but if you want you can also pay extra all right and that's and then you can get uh, stocks or you can uh, sell stocks as well so the actions you can do you can get stocks buy the card or you can sell stocks and get money back coins back uh, the thing about this is that there's certain actions which will cause cards to be discarded into the uh, one of three slots in the main scoring uh, main scoring area All right what are these three slots for is at the end of the game whichever slot has the highest number of cards well then that power will be activated and they are more for screwing your, your opponents all right because during the game itself uh you can't really there's not much impact that you have on your opponents but this is more like an end game impact for, for example if the first one has more more uh cards than anyone else then all the wild cards are right, they're wild cards which is represented by this yellow symbol uh, do not count for any goods at all all right instead they just give you three coins all right, so that could screw your opponent if they have been collecting a lot of uh, uh, wild cards. All right, because wild cards at the end can count as any stocks. And on the game, you also will sell all the stocks that you have in your hand. They give you money. Then whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win the game. So uh, my first impressions of this is that um, the rules were not that easy to get into. There were some parts you were not really understanding. There were some uh, mechanisms that were not very intuitive. So we. It, it end up causing a lot of confusion like how do you start this and so on and so forth the game also comes with two expansions which is a bit which which because they were mixed together with the regular cards so it was a bit caused quite a bit of confusion as to what how do we play this why are there all this other stuff there what what do we need to actually just set up and play the game rather than having to figure out 
which is the expansions and and which is not included in the basic game. So I would say that uh for first impressions wise, it is it's a try before you buy. All right, uh, I may try it again just to see how it goes because I during the game itself I wasn't collecting a lot of stocks and you need to collect a minimum number of uh, each particular stocks to be able to for them to count points. And so my opponents smoked me because they they were collecting stocks at the end. For me, I was like, oh, I was just trying to get as much money during the game itself, but not at the end. So it's a try before you buy. Uh, you can take a look at um, 1920 Wall Street. Thank you so much for watching.